Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters. Um, I have had a dialogue with a scholar called Sheikh Haitam Al Haddad. He's from London. Uh, of course, I've had a debate with uh, other scholars and imams and uh, ordinary fellow Muslims about um, some fabricated hadiths by uh, Bukhari and Muslim, <clears throat> and uh, particularly about uh, the hadith about stoning adulterers and killing apostates. And uh, unfortunately, they uh, do whatever to uh, save the reputation of uh, Bukhari and Muslim. Uh, they even lie. Uh, and uh, today I want to um, show uh, <clears throat> some of uh, Sheikh Hatam's uh, lies about uh, these uh, hadiths that, uh, uh, that how he tried to protect uh, Bukhari and Muslim. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it is uh, saying in Sahih Muslim book uh, 017 number 4194 that uh, Abdullah bin Abbas reported that Umar bin Khattab sat on the pulpit of uh, Allah's messenger peace be upon him and said verily Allah sent Muhammad peace be upon him with truth and he sent down the book upon him and <clears throat> the verse of stoning was included in what was sent down to him. We received it retained, it, retained it in our memory and understood it. Our last messenger, peace be upon him, awarded the punishment of stoning to death, and after him, we also awarded the punishment of stoning. I'm afraid that with the lapse of time, the people may forget it and may say, we do not find the punishment of stoning in the book of Allah, and those go astray uh, by abandoning uh, this duty prescribed by Allah. Stoning is a duty laid down in Allah's book for married men and women who commit adultery when proof is established. And there is uh, as well the same one in Sahih Bukhari. And <clears throat> uh, Quran 15, 9 says, absolutely we have revealed the reminder and absolutely we will preserve it. So um, when I ask, uh, why these uh, two hadiths say that a verse of Quran is missing and there is a hadith which is categorized as uh, uh, what is it, Sahih Sunnah ibn Majid book of Nikah says that narrated Aisha uh, uh, the verse of stoning and uh, of suckling an adult ten times re were revealed and they were written on a paper and kept under my bed when Allah's messenger um, passed away and we were preceded uh, uh, with his death, a goat entered and ate away the paper. So my question is that why these uh, hadiths, they, uh, you know, they claim that a verse of Quran is missing. Okay, thank you. This is very so, important for me to know, brother. Okay. Uh, so, okay, this is your first question. What is your second question? Uh, this is uh, the most important one, uh, that why it, these two hadiths, the, the question is that if the, uh, you know, Bukhari and Muslim are absolutely uh, sahih, then why these two hadiths, they uh, claim that a verse of Quran is missing? No, it did, it did not say that it is missing. Hadith says that a verse of Quran is missing, and there, there is a hadith. That hadith says that it was written on a sheet of paper, and then a goat ate that, uh, that you know, that verse. Despite uh, uh, we know that uh, you know, Quran was uh, memorized by pe by people. No, no, know? it did not say it is missing. You, yani, uh, use your a little bit. Yeah. Okay. okay. Use your a little bit. Yeah. Okay. It didn't say that it is missing. Yeah? yeah, it says because if it is missing, then it will not be known. Okay. Did you but get that? But we say, we, we, brother, we cannot find it in Quran as the hadith also. Ah, so okay, so it is not missing. No, we say we, we cannot find it in the Quran. There is no. Yeah, such a no, but it is. So how did uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab yeah know about it? How did uh, Aisha know about it? Okay, yeah. and they they told us about it, so it is not missing. No, so it it is uh, it is not missing means that it is in, in not in Quran, it is in the Hadith. 
Yeah. So, Ibrahim. yeah. So just, Yani, you know, now you need to correct your statement. Yes. Okay. Because you need to be academic in your approach. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So it is not missing. It is yeah. there, but it is not. Not in now, Not. It is not part of the Quran now. Okay. Unfortunately, I think that we uh, don't understand the, the language because the hadith clearly says that the verse uh, is missing, the verse in Quran is missing, and they try to fool us uh, by every uh, measure. And, uh, and even uh, that hadith, the other hadith says that the verse was eaten by uh, a goat. So it means that the verse is not in Quran anymore, it's missing. Yeah. So, yes, so you mean that the, the, we have to uh, follow, because that Imam was saying that uh, it is falsely reported and I cannot act upon a verse which is not in the Quran, you know? No, 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 no. we have, yani, the Quran says to us, yeah, yeah. And there are more than 80 verses in the Quran that command us to take what the Prophet وسلم, okay, came up with. And the Prophet ﷺ said, I am the one who, okay, brought the Qur'an. Yes. Yeah? Okay, so uh, the, the, uh, we, there, are, uh, there are details that, not, that are not mentioned in the Qur'an, but the Prophet ﷺ clarified them, yeah? Like how to pray. Details, uh, yes, I know. Yeah. Why I'm doing this is because he didn't uh, allow me to talk. Uh, and the details he's talking about is about explanation of the rules of Quran, not adding rules uh, to Quran. Uh, when Quran says 100 lashes, uh, Hadith cannot say that no, stone them to death. Or even Hadith cannot say 101 lashes. It has to be 100 lashes. What Hadith can do is to say the four witnesses, what kind of conditions they have to have to be uh, admitted as, a, as witnesses. Uh, not everybody can be witnesses. So the hadith can explain the witnesses of the, the for example, the, the rule of, uh, which is in Quran, or how to wipe these uh, adulterers, for example. So uh, the, the issue is, uh, this is not missing. It is not part of the Quran anymore. This is the maximum we can say, yeah. Now, regarding your question, as I told you, yani, it is very simple, yani, yes. that, that, that verse is not missing, okay? Yes. That verse yani, is not uh, part of the Quran because Allah is it Jalla Ala, or is not? Yeah, Allah Jalla Ala, yeah, yeah. So Allah Jalla Ala says, مَا أَوْ نُنْسِيهَا نَأْتِي بِخَيْرٍ مِنْهَا أَوْ مِثْلِهَا So Allah Jalla Ala reveals certain verses. Allah Jalla Ala sometimes uh, abrogates the meaning, the hukum, yeah, okay. the ruling that is mentioned there, and he maintains, yeah, he could, told the Prophet wasallam to keep the text as part of the Quran, okay. yeah, yes, and then uh, there are certain verses that Allah Jalla revealed them in the beginning, and then he told the Prophet wasallam that he, Allah Jalla Almighty doesn't want them to be part of the Quran. Okay, now what he's saying here is about abrogated verses of Quran. So abrogated verses of Quran means that we don't need them anymore. We are not going to act upon them. But this verse that the Hadith claimed that is missing in Quran is the, the Hadith claim that we have to act upon, him, uh, upon that verse that is, just, is missing uh, in Quran. And this Sheikh is not going to explain why that had, uh, verse is not in Quran. He is just trying to, you know, to uh, protect this uh, fabricated hadith. Yeah. Simple. So, uh, yeah. So, so you mean that uh, the the verse we have to, um, you know, <clears throat> we have to act upon uh, this verse and stone people to death. Stone people to death like this. Does the verse say this? No, the, the verse doesn't say this. Uh, uh, what is it? This uh, hadith says that uh, you know the hadith yeah, says yeah, that the, the, it hadith, is a beauty. The, the hadith, the hadith say 
the hadith says يعني, catch people in the streets and stone them to death no 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 it says that the uh, adulterer a married and uh, a married man and married woman if they commit uh, adultery they have adultery. to be stoned to death طيب. okay what is your question no my question is that uh, we, we have to uh, i mean according this hadith then we have to do that yes we have to uh, stone adulterers as they do it now uh, in some part of the world they, they stone what, what? it is <clears throat> he's acting as if as he doesn't know anything about stoning adulterers uh, many places where do they do it they do it in <clears throat> iran i saw uh, they did it in sudan i think a few uh, not uh, not long time ago i saw uh, uh, you know some of these um, islamophobic uh, they had put it um, uh, a group in in I think Sudan, they had. It was not the government, but it was a group. They had. I have the pictures. They had the. If you want, I will show you the picture. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They're stoning uh, somebody uh, accused mm -hmm. of adultery. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's no, not someone accused. <clears throat> yes. No, 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 no. Not someone accused. Okay. Yani, yes, you need to be precise. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it is. Yeah, and I don't know about the details or how, how to do it, but generally speaking, yeah, those people, those people who were stoned to death, okay. yeah, I don't know about Iran, but I know yeah, some of the, uh, of the countries that you mentioned, those people who were stoned to death, they requested to be stoned to death. Okay, them, themselves, you mean? Yes. Oh my God, I mean, who can believe that somebody who is sane come and ask to be stoned to death? Okay, but uh, I know that in Iran they, they don't request it because uh, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know about I don't know about Iran. Okay, but they, if somebody they, don't, they don't follow yani, the Sunni yeah. school you mean, of thought. You mean, you mean somebody asked to be stoned to death? Yeah, yeah. Those people yes. normally, yeah, yani, those people who are stoned to death, yeah, in yes. Muslim in Muslim Sunni countries, okay. yeah, they committed adultery, okay. yeah, and they confessed that, yeah, okay. and they uh, feel guilty, yeah, and mm -hmm. they wanted to purify from what they have done. Okay, okay. Yes. I'm just telling you what they. Okay, and they. Uh, they wanted to be, they feel that the only way to uh, to be purified, yeah, yeah, is to act upon this hadith that you have mentioned and okay. to act upon what the Prophet ﷺ did before, yeah, okay, and what the uh, other uh, caliphs do and what Muslims have done throughout history, okay. yeah, okay, so they feel they believe that the only way of purification is to be stoned to death. If these people are so religious and so believing, why they commit adultery? And there is a way to be purified, and we know in Islam that that way is repentance. Allah SWT says that no uh, sin is bigger than my forgiveness. So why they cannot just repent? Why they have to ask to be stoned to death. It's obviously that this scholar is lying to defend Bukhari and Muslim. Yes, I have heard as well before, I, I remember once I saw you, you were saying that we, we punish these people so that they, uh, they don't get punished uh, in next life. No, yes. we don't, Yani, it's not accurate, Yani, this. Yani, they wanted to be, okay, punished like this. They wanted so to be, is to death. Yeah, yeah, so that they go to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, not, it's not heaven. It's, it's Jannah. It's Jannah. Yes, Paradise. Jannah. Yes, yes. Paradise. So, be, so the, uh, a way of going to Jannah is uh, to commit adultery and then uh, get. No, not, no, no, no. It's not to commit adultery. If they committed adultery, okay. yeah. But yeah, they get they purified. Want, you said they get purified. Yeah, they want. They wanted to be purified in order to go to Jannah, to okay, Jannah. to yes. Jannah purified, and they don't want to make Allah angry at them, and they want to please Allah, yeah? So okay. they, they requested to be stoned to death.
So, the, uh, okay, the, as I said, that the, then it is a way to go to, to Jana to commit a crime and then ask for to be purified by being executed or stoned to death. This, this sounds like that, brother. And it sounds that like we judge them here, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I know a lot of verses that says to his own prophet that you just invite people, it's not upon you to judge people. Judgment is only on Allah. Where, where, no, yeah, where is, where is, where, where does it say that uh, it is not for you to judge people? Remind, uh, it's a 21, uh, verse 8821 80, 80, yes uh -huh. so remind oh muhammad you are only a reminder you are not over them a controller okay so who, uh, whoever he who turns away and disbelieve then allah will punish him with the greatest punishment indeed to us is their return yeah then indeed upon us is their account so it means that it is not upon you, Muhammad. You just invite them. It is not uh, upon you to what? To, to, uh, to punish them. It's written. It no, says no, that it is not. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't say that. And you said that you know Arabic. Have you referred to this verse in Arabic? No, but uh, you mean that. The, Do the, you know the, Arabic? No, I don't know Arabic. But the translation. So how? How? So, see. The translation, as you know, is not but, normally accurate, and it but, does so not. So they are not get... accurate. Unfortunately, they always uh, refer to Arabic language, and they humiliate those who have translated Quran to other languages. I understand that very, very small details might be uh, changed in uh, in uh, translation, but may not the entire meaning. Okay, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that the judgment is on him, not on his own prophet, not on us, then we have, we, we understand that. It is uh, not something hidden in Arabic that, uh, no, uh, Sheikh Hatam can uh, judge people. Who knows uh, what Sheikh Hatam does in his private life, that he's going to judge other people. Is it, is it uh, he's sinner himself? Everybody is sinner. So how big is his sins, that he's going to judge another sinner, okay? That, so that we cannot read give... any more Quran in uh, English? No, you see, we read the Quran in English to get the basic message. But when it comes to controversial issues, yeah, mm -hmm. we have to refer to the Arabic in order to get the what was uh, meant accurately. Now this sheikh, another sheikh, I don't know his name, um, he's, he knows Arabic and he's explaining uh, indirectly that uh, the Hadith about killing apostates is how uh, fabricated is that hadith. And he's explaining it from verses of Quran. So he knows Arabic. So this uh, method of you don't know Arabic, that, that's why you don't understand, is a very full method. And there's a theme running through the Quran also that negates the idea that people should be forced to accept a belief against their will. Just a few examples of that. Allah said in Surah Al-Kahf, وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ مِنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنُ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرُ Say, it is the truth from your Lord. So whoever wills, let him believe. And whoever wills, let him reject belief. This is not an open endorsement of disbelief. There's consequences. If you believe, you'll enter paradise. If you disbelieve, you'll be uh, plunged into hellfire. But it's a matter of choice. And in Surah Yunus, Allah said, He's addressing the Prophet ﷺ. If your Lord willed, whoever is on the earth, all of them, in totality, would have believed. So the word man in Arabic is one of, they call it Adat al umum It is a means of expressing generality. And then that's further emphasized with kulluhum. So there's no ambiguity here. If your Lord will, every single person on the face of the earth would be a believer. And then 
Allah goes on to address the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Would you then compel people in order that they become believers? So this is a rhetorical question. The obvious answer is no. This is again, it's a theme that runs through the Qur'an again and again and again in different ways. And we, we know that this is a pattern, this is a, a method that Allah uses in the Qur'an uh, that when something is very important, it's repeated frequently. Allah says, وَمَنْ يُطِعُ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهُ وَمَنْ تَوَلَّى فَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ عَلَيْهِمْ حَفِيظًا Whoever obeys the messenger has obeyed Allah. And those who turn away, we have not sent you over them as a guardian. How shall Allah guide a people who disbelieved after their belief and had witnessed that the messenger is true and clear signs had come to them? And Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. Those, their recompense will be that upon them is the curse of Allah and the angels and the people all together, abiding eternally therein. The punishment will not be lightened for them, nor will they be reprieved, except for those who repent after that and correct themselves. For indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. Indeed, those who disbelieve after their belief and then increase in disbelief Never will their repentance be accepted, and they are the ones astray. Indeed, those who disbelieve and die while they are disbelievers, never would the whole capacity of the earth in gold be accepted from one of them if he would seek to ransom himself with it. For those, there will be a painful punishment, and they will have no helpers. So, again, you have the penalty being referred to the hereafter. And, and it mentions these people dying and it doesn't say they're killed while they are kuffar. so the Quran does make a distinction between dying and killing in other verses in uh, the verse about the Prophet وسلم, in Surah, uh, Surah Al Imran also وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ Muhammad is not but a messenger. Other messengers have passed on before him. So if he was to die or be killed, would you turn back on your heels to unbelief? So there are two alternatives being mentioned here with regard to the Prophet ﷺ, dying a natural death or being killed. So the fact that dying is mentioned with regard to the apostate is it carries some weight and this point is further strengthened by the verse in Surah An-Nisa okay this is explicit it's mentioning a person who believed and then disbelieved and then believed again and then disbelieved if the penalty is death how would he have an opportunity to believe again or to disbelieve a second time. Now Sheikh Hatam is uh, talking to uh, another person, uh, somebody is interviewing him, I don't know his name, he's a non-Muslim, and Sheikh Hatam is uh, clearly very, very uh, ashamed to admit that this hadith is fabricated or to admit that he's following this uh, fabricated hadith of killing apostates. You got me sold for 95%. But I need to ask you this question. Okay, no problem. Go on. In the Quran, there's a number of rules that cannot be changed. Yes. Yes. Where is the rule on the punishment for apostasy in that respect? See. Which is death. See. Yeah, let can, me, can you be clear on that? Yeah, let, let me keep it clear. See, there are certain things, yeah, that you won't be able to understand them unless you accept Islam, unless you study Islam comprehensively, unless you look at the bigger picture. This is nothing that is practiced every day and people are just punished here and there and people are... No, no, it is not like this. Now he's also lying here that he says that uh, it is not like this. Uh, they don't kill people, they do it because the rule says that if they go out of Islam, you have to kill them. And they have been doing it in extremist country like Iran. They have killed many uh, so-called apostates. 
And uh, if they could, they could millions of others who uh, have uh, rejected Islam. But uh, fortunately, they can't. It's, they don't have the power, but otherwise they would. They, they like to do that. And those issues are just minor rules. Killing people for their beliefs, which, is going, uh, which goes against the uh, Quranic verse of no compulsion in religion, is a minor issue for Sheikh Hatem. Okay. They but are not the essence of Islam. No, but I think they are the essence of what causes so much fears and mistrust with so many people. If I were to convert or to embrace Islam, yeah. what would happen the day that I say, you know, I've changed my mind, I want to leave Islam yeah. again? See, this is a very, very hypothetical question. Because if you accept Islam wholeheartedly, it is very, very, very unlikely that you will just come at one point and say, well, I changed my mind. It's hypothetical, but it's a clear question. Oh, my God. He is a scholar and he cannot answer a simple question. And he wants that John uh, uh, convert to Islam without knowing that what will happen to him if he wants to leave. He's clearly shamed to admit that yeah, he believed in killing apostates. Yeah, but a, a clear question it doesn't mean that it does exist. Young, accept Islam, enjoy the Islam, and once you want to leave it, we will discuss it, yeah? That's like taking a big chance. Yeah, yeah. Spot that... me. Do, do this and... and, and, and yeah. But what, yeah. is it so hard to, to, to answer? Not so hard, but it is so hard for you to understand it. But what's the answer? Yeah. It is hard for you to understand it. It is hard for the viewers to understand it. So it is so hard to understand that uh, the, the rule is to get killed. Is it so hard to understand for John or for anybody else? Of course, it's not so hard to understand. What is the, so hard to understand? that uh, Did you kill me if I want to leave Islam? That Sheikh explained that Quran itself says that you can go out how many times you want. You can come and go. You can come and go. It is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to judge you. Quran says like that, but these extremists, they say that, no, you get killed. But come on, Ian. Come on, come on, come on. Give up, give up. Just say I gave up. <laughs> Just say I gave up. This Sheikh... I think his name is Sheikh Hassim. He's a quite extremist and he's very, very clear and honest about his belief. And he says directly that you have to get killed if you leave Islam just because of a hadith, a fabricated hadith. And they go against Quran, unfortunately. No compulsion in Islam. Well, it's in religion. Why killing those who leave Islam? Okay, that's a very logical question. Now, is killing others justifiable? This depends on where you're coming from. If you're a Muslim, you would say, yes, this is a prescribed punishment. In Islam, it is not up to you to embrace Islam and then apostatize. Because we have rules and regulations. You don't want to accept Islam from the beginning? Don't. Remain in your religion. But to come and accept Islam and then leave Islam. This is a crime that is the cardinal sin. This is something that has to be punishable in Islam to protect Islam and the Muslims. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, thank you for watching this uh, video. Please uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, to my channel. And I'm open for any discussion and debate uh, in the future. Uh, you can find my uh, contacts uh, at the end of the video. I appreciate it very much. Assalamu alaikum.